In the few pages we're about to read, there's one word, and it's this word right here, understatement. Understatement. And I want you to try and ask yourself, how on earth could we figure out what that word means? Um, I want you to pause this video for a second while you have a think about that question. How can we figure out what the word understatement might mean? And after you've worked it out and you've had a guess, then you can play the rest of the video where I'll carry on reading from yesterday. Okay. Oh, sorry, it's a bit of a fiddle because my phone is on charge. What a pain. There was no doubt in her mind that she had met a truly extraordinary mathematical brain. And words like child genius and prodigy went flitting through her head. She knew that these sort of wonders do pop up in the world from time to time, but only once or twice in a hundred years. After all, Mozart was only five when he started composing for the piano. And look what happened to him. It's not fair, Lavender said. How can she do it and we can't? Don't worry, Lavender. You'll soon catch up, Miss Honey said, lying through her teeth. At this point, Miss Honey could not resist the temptation of exploring still further the mind of this astonishing child. She knew that she ought to be paying some attention to the rest of the class. She was altogether too excited to let the matter rest. Well, she said, pretending to address the whole class. Let's have some sums for the moment and see if any of you have begun to learn how to spell. Hands up, anyone who can spell cat. Three hands went up. They belonged to Lavender. A small, boy, a small boy called Nigel and to Matilda. Spell cat, Nigel. Nigel spelt it. Miss Honey now decided to ask a question to, that she normally would have dreamed. Oh, class two, my brain is not working today. Miss Honey now decided to ask a question that she normally wouldn't have dreamed of asking the class on the first day. I wonder, she said, whether any of you three know how to spell that know how to spell cat, learn how to read a whole group of words when they're strung together in a sentence. I have, Nidal said. So have I, Lavender said. Miss Honey went to the blackboard and she wrote with her white chalk the sentence. I have already begun to learn how to read long sentences. She purposely made it difficult and she knew that there were probably precious, five few, uh, precious few five-year-olds around who would be able to manage it. Can you tell me what it says, Nigel? She asked. Mm, it's a bit too hard, Nigel said. Lavender? The first word is I, Lavender said. Can any of you read the whole sentence? Miss Honey asked, waiting for the yes that she felt was certain was going to come from Matilda. Yes, Matilda said. Go ahead, Miss Honey said. Matilda read the sentence without any hesitation at all. That is very good indeed, Miss Honey said making the understatement of her life. How much can you read, Matilda? I think I can read most things, Miss Honey, Matilda said, although I'm afraid I can't always understand the meanings. Miss Honey got to her feet and walked smartly out of the room, but was back in 30 seconds carrying a thick book. She opened it at random and placed it on Matilda's desk. This is a book of humorous poetry, she said. See if you can read that one aloud. Smoothly, without a pause, and at a nice speed, Matilda began to read. An epicure dining at Crewe found a rather large mouse in his shoe. Cried the waiter, don't shout and wave it about or the rest will be wanting one too. Several children saw the funny side of the rhyme and they laughed. And Miss Honey said, do you know what an epicure is, Matilda? Mm, is it someone who's dainty with his eating, Matilda said. That's correct, Miss Honey said. Do you know what happened? What happened? Sorry. Do you happen to know what that particular type of poetry is called? It's called the limerick, Matilda said. It's a lovely one. It's so funny. It's a famous one, Miss Honey said, picking up the book and returning to her table in front of the class. A witty limerick is very hard to write, she added. They look easy, but they are most certainly not. I know, Matilda said. I've tried to write quite a few times. Um, I've tried quite a few times, but mine are never any good. You have, have you? Until Miss Honey said, more startled than ever. Well, Matilda, I would very much like to hear one of those limericks you say you've written. Could you try to remember one for us? Well, Matilda said, hesitating. I've actually been trying to make one up about you, Miss Honey, while I've been sitting here. About me, Miss Honey cried. 
Well, we've certainly got to hear that one, haven't we? I don't think I want to say it, Miss Honey. Please tell it, Miss Honey said. I promise I won't mind. I think you will, Miss Honey, because I have to use your first name to make things rhyme, and that's why I don't want to say it. How do you know my first name, Miss Honey asked. I heard another teacher calling you by it just before we came in, Matilda said. She called you Jenny. I insist upon hearing this limerick, Miss Honey said, smiling one of her rare smiles. Stand up quickly and recite it. Reluctantly, Matilda stood up and very slowly, very nervously, she recited her limerick. The thing we all ask about Jenny is surely there cannot be many young girls in their place with so lovely a face. The answer to that is not any.